So today's project is integration of a digital caliper, uh, digital micometer, dial indicator with an Arduino. So I've got, these are eye gauging. This is basically what we're using for this. This will also work for Mitsutoyo. Um, I believe they have basically the same connector and the same protocol. I don't have anything, and my one that I have that, that is that brand has, uh, doesn't have the digital connector on it. Um, so this is mostly for, I mean, this will work on eye gauging or whatever, but so everything I'm going to show this on is going to be eye gauging. So what we've got is the USB cable, which is just an item that you can buy that connects the caliper to a box here that then plugs in via USB to your computer. And this functions basically as a keyboard. And every time you press this data button, either here or there's another connection on the caliper, it will basically type in the digits of what's displayed. So if you're filling out an Excel sheet or you had something set up where you're trying to QC something, you could run through and, and or if you're just measuring something up to reverse engineer it, you can run through and then just click that button and it, you don't have to type in the numbers and it makes things, makes things really nice quick. You can do that way. But what we're gonna do is make it so that an Arduino can read those numbers and understand them and then I'm going to use that information on uh, on a, the project I did before with a stepper motor. I'll put a link here. Um, basically, this is going to work to as a DRO sort of. Uh, that's on a machine that travels a very short distance. So I've got a dial indicator, a one-inch dial indicator that's digital that this will output to, and then the Arduino drives the stepper, but it allow it to hit a very very precise position. Uh, more precise than the backlash and, and garbage in the machine that that's hooked up to um, can actually achieve without, you know, just based on steps. Uh, based on the steps, it fluctuates all over the place and, uh, you know, it's very difficult to get that dialed in, but, but doing this is going to solve that problem. So that's the end result of what we're trying to do. But you could integrate this into any kind of project. You know, if you were, you know, say you were doing, you know, QC work and you just wanted to you know, set this up to where it, it had a, a green light or a red light, you know, unless you had, you had a stupid employee or somebody that, um, you know, you just wanted to have them measure something and you could say go, no, go. Well, you could set up the Arduino to turn on a red light or a, a, a green light for whether it was good or bad, I guess. Um, really kind of the sky's the limit. As long as you can get the data into the Arduino, you can do pretty much anything you want to with it. So what have we got here? So we've got the Arduino hooked up to the cable that would normally plug into this box. And then uh, I've got a display on here that I think will come up on the camera. And basically the code is, is printing out what we're getting as a result of, of what we're doing here. So you can see the caliper and the display match up. And there's a little bit of a, there's a, little bit of a delay I've pro put in the program, basically just so it's not cycling through really, really fast. Because when we go to the oscilloscope, we're going to need to be able to isolate one function. Um, but it will change, and it shows we switch over to Imperial. Well, it's got a little weird. You know, I did something with the... On the metric side... I think I have a screw up in my code. I was I was trying to simplify simplify some of my loops, and I think I switched. Um, you saw it was millimeters, millimeters on the display. So anyway, just a code issue. But basically, we're going to get it so that we have that number, and we can do whatever we want with it. Um, what did we start with? So I had uh, the original basis for this is. I uh, found a, a uh, article on Instructables that sort of gave me the basics um, and a fair bit of the code for what we're doing here. Um, there was one issue that I had in that, but we'll we'll talk about that later. So the basics are that we're sending a signal to the caliper or whatever instrument we've got it hooked up to, and then it's going to send back uh, binary data that tells us the number that's displayed the units and where the decimal point is going to be. So if we look here, it shows the data format. We've got these first four positions that I believe, you know, they've got some extra functions in here, and I'd, I'd have to go back into the documentation and, and verify what those were for. 
Um, but the first one, really important one we come to here is the sign. And so whether the, whether the output is positive or negative, well, this shows a uh, binary 0, 0, 0, 0. So what that really is, is we go down here and we'll show on the oscilloscope in a second. We've got our request pin here, which is basically that button push. We're, we're emulating that button push either on the box or at the caliper that we would normally do when it was used with the USB. So that tells the caliper, hey, put out the data for, for what you've got here. And then we've got the clock cycles here, and that tells the Arduino the timing of where to look for the different, either a high or a low uh, input from the data line to correspond to these bits. So if it reads that it's at a zero voltage, it calls it a zero, and if it's at a five volts, then it calls it a one. And that's how we convert to binary ones and zeros, and then we get the results for the data that we're trying to fill in here. So if we were in a situation where it was a positive output, well, you can see I've got a window running here in the background. This is, this is the uh, output of in real, well, in real time from the Arduino that's hooked up right now. So we've got a, we'll do that. We've got a positive, let me try to get this arranged so that we can see both of these at the same time. Um, so we go over to our, our fifth element here which is one, two, three, four, five, and then it's zero, 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 zero. So this is the actual binary data that the Arduino is reading out. So if I go to the caliper and I re-zero this and then change it so that now it's negative, you see that that, that code right there changes from zero, 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 zero to zero, 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 one which indicates that that is a negative. And then the next stages here are our numeric values. And you can look up how to convert binary to, uh, to numeric. It's, a, it's a fairly simple once you look at it. But basically, each of these will, will give us our, our full number um, when that's all put together. And then this last, this 12th place here, Again, we look at whether it's 0, 1, 0, 0, that tells us where, where our decimal point's gonna be within the six digits that we put out here. So that sets the decimal, and then the next one here sets the units. So again, we look up here. We're currently on inches. So inches is one, zero, 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 and we see that here, one, zero, zero, zero. And then I'll switch it to metric and wait for it to cycle. And now we see it's zero, 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 which corresponds to the metric data. So once you have that, and I'll put the, I'll put the uh, link to the Instructables um, uh, article in the, uh, in the description here. So I've modified the code a bit and um, we can run through that. Well, also I'll show you while I've got uh, while I've got it up on the screen. So we're looking at this this timing chart here, and this is just a, a kind of a rendering of what we would look at. So what would this actually look at when we when we run it on the machine? Well, I've got my oscilloscope set up here. This is not the, not the real-time output. I locked this um, from a previous one that I was doing. But you'll see the, this is the clock, free, the clock frequency here. And then for each of these, this is our data line here. So you can see where it switches. And it's high here, so we'd be reading 1, 1, 1, 1 for each of these cycles here. And then it, we would get a 0, and then 1, 1, and then 0, and then 1, and then 0, 0, 0, 0 at the end. Um, and that basically runs, you can see it's all the ones we see at the beginning of the first part here where it's all high. So let's see, I got my request. Let's see. So this actually fired twice where it's sending out data, but this is my request signal coming in and then the request signal going out. But 
that just gives you a, a more of a visualization of what we're actually doing where we've got the zeros that we're seeing and then we've got a couple ones and stuff indicating you know like this last one is well these zeros here would be the um, the uh, metric versus uh, you know millimeters versus inches and then this uh, this section here would indicate the decimal point so that's that's what you would see as a real signal coming out and what the Arduino is is working through to interpret again most of this code was taken from that instructables article we're gonna look through so the place where I had an issue Not even looking at the right one. Obviously, it's the one called LCD code. That makes sense. Okay, so looking at the looking at the code here, we are we've got our, we've got our pins already set up, um, and then uh, what we're what we're looking for is. We're sending a request, so we're this is our request pin. We're going to set that to high, and we saw that on the oscilloscope. That's what triggers the data to be output. So we've got 13 sections that we're going to go through with four pieces each, and so we've got a for loop to 13. Well, the original, the problem with the Instructables code, and I put a comment in in on Instructables um, to point this out that I had an issue with was if you copy the code direct from that site, their for loop runs all the way down to this bottom section. So you're running all of this each time. And I think what was happening, and I, I haven't tried it on an Arduino Mega or something with a little more power, but I think maybe the delay in there wasn't allowing it to pick up the data in the right spot. So making this change where it only is looping through, um, I moved it down to here so it's only looping through the information that it actually needs so we've got 13 sections and then with each one of those we've got our four binary points that we saw here our 0000 or 0001 like we saw over here in the data format chart so then it looks to see on the clock line whether when it switches from high to low because that's basically its trigger to say okay well here's another step in our 52 bits and then we read what the um, I've got this serial print out here so that it's showing that's where we're getting the um, the data that we're, we're showing up here that uh, that gives us the actual binary so we can view it um, and then we're writing that data and then basically when it comes down here it converts the binary data to a, to a uh, string value with a number and then we're applying the decimal based on based on what the decimal position is, uh, you know, essentially. So we've we've got 11 um, is our uh, is our decimal that would co correspond to D12 over here because uh, we start at zero, obviously. And um, and then our units convert section D D13 uh, over on that side. Um, and then we're printing, we've got the, uh, basically printing to the serial window and then to the LCD. We're going through and if we're, if it's zero, then we set the units to millimeters. And if it's, uh, if it's not, then we just, I, I should set that a little bit differently, but um, if it's not, then it goes to inches. And then if the, if it's negative, which would be if the sign value here in the, uh, in the array at position four, uh, is equal to eight, then that means that it is uh, it's negative. So basically, binary the zero 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 um, one equals eight when you when you convert binary over. Um, so that's basically what just as an if statement. So that's all pretty easy. So that's the uh, that's the basics of of what we're doing here, and I, I think it's a really powerful tool to you know, to integrate into your projects, to be able to add that in and, and, uh, and record very precise values. Like I, I, you know, I could buy a DRO and you'd probably have to go through the same, same type of setup. Um, for the machine that I'm using, it's, this thing does, only travels about an inch, so it doesn't really matter. But you could take, I mean, you could take on a cheap 
if you're trying to make a really, really low cost CNC or, or a really low cost DRO, you could just take a caliper and mount it so that it moved, you know, with the machine or whatever, um, and have it output that value. I haven't looked to see how fast you can get this. Like I said, I've got this on, I think a 10 second delay between reading, but it'll read much faster than that. You know, you could probably get fairly, fairly real time values, um, where you can, you know, do what I'm doing and essentially correct for a bad machine with the logic in your Arduino and, um, you know, compensating. So if it moves so many steps, well, and that puts it in the wrong position, then it can either move back or, or move forward. I've got an extreme amount of backlash in this machine that I'm working with. So I will have it come up and then just gradually step closer, um, to what it's doing. Cause it's trying to get to a very, very close point within, you know, I'd like to have it within a 10th of an inch or not a 10th, but a, uh, 10 thousand. Um, a tenth. but, um, anyway, so that's, that's the, that's the goal for my project, but just wanted to give an overview of, of how that works and talk you through the basics of reading in binary data into a, uh, into an Arduino and hope that helps.